Come out with us and play Love Your London Have a banana In today's instalment of Love Your London You'd be crazy not to pay your respects at this pub But first let's get lost in the urban art and the smell of curry in Brick Lane I love this. Fantastic. So colourful. Um, yeah. So I mean, this is this is uh, Brick Lane. Um, this part of Brick Lane is called. It's, it's Brick Lane. Uh, that part over there is called Osborne Street. Um, now there's lots and lots of curry places down here, obviously. <laughs> Nowhere near as many curry places as, as there used to be. Uh, this is obviously. Very sad. Um, as I said, a lot of the places uh, have um, closed down uh, for a number of reasons. One, uh, lack of late night venues around here after, because of the gentrification has meant that there's fewer people who really fancy a pint late at night. Um, the other, the other reason, oh look at that, it's fantastic. Um, the, other, the other reason is um, that the children of the Bangladeshi um, immigrants who moved here and set up restaurants they're not really interested in running restaurants anymore and it's actually quite hard to recruit you need to guarantee if someone's coming from outside the EU um, to work here as a, as a chef you need to guarantee that they're going to be earning £25,000 a year um, and that's just not sustainable for a lot of these places so um, what happens is uh, well, they just can't find anyone to recruit. Uh, they, there was a drive to try and uh, train uh, young British uh, people uh, in, the, in, in, in the Bangladeshi Indian um, cuisine, but it just wasn't the same. I mean, it's, the Indian food is something that you learn from your family. It's not something that you can re really learn in a course. And in fact, most people dropped out of the course. Uh, now we're going to have a quick pint now in one of my favourite pubs in East End. It's called the Pride of Spitalfields. Very sadly though, one of the reasons I wanted to take you here was to introduce you to a lovely cat called Lenny, um, who unfortunately died last year at the age of 19. Um, I remember Lenny when he was, when, when he was like a little kitten. Uh, that's how long I've been coming here. Uh, such a friendly cat, but unfortunately Lenny, one of the most famous cats in in London, to be honest, he's had, he, he, he had his own Twitter feed and Facebook page and calendar and everything. Uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with us, so there's no Lenny to play with. He would always be there on his chair and, and he was such a friendly cat. But anyway, still a lovely pub. So let's have it, let's check it out. <laughs> Actually, it used to be called something else in the uh, old days. It used to be known as the Romford Arms many, many years ago. Um, got a bit of a. I know I wasn't going to go on about Jack the Ripper on these on these vlogs, but since we're here, I may as well say that uh, two of the suspects um, were possibly drinking here uh, in on the 9th of November, 1888. One was um, James Hardiman. He was a cat meat vendor. I'm not sure if he was selling cat meat or meat for cats. I think it was meat for cats. Meat for cats. Yes. Meat for cats. <laughs> he lived at number 13, I believe, uh, Henniage Street. Um, and uh, the other, the other uh, possible, the other person who was drinking here supposedly that night was George Hutchinson. He's uh, he's possibly more more likely to have maybe been Jack the Ripper. Who knows? Yeah. So that was there used to be a brewery, Best and Co. Uh, number five, Henyard Street. It stopped being a brewery at the, at the turn of the 1900s. Okay, let's check out the rest of Brick Lane. Um, we're going to do a proper Brick Lane tour um, later on uh, in, a, in a future instalment. Yes, there's still plenty of places like Masala Indian food, but here we have a Korean 
Oh, here we have a Brazilian, here we have a Japanese. It's not the same. Um, now in the old days, when you used to walk down here, there were so many curry venues that you'd actually get hassled, in a good way, you'd get hassled by people trying to come, get you to come in, offering you um, loads and loads of incentives to drink, you know, three bottles of wine, uh, two for the price of one, all that sort of stuff. You do still get that, but you don't get that anywhere near as much as you do now because there isn't as much competition. This restaurant over here, probably, probably the least interesting looking one and also quite a, a, a strange name, standard Balti House, but... Some of my family members might recognise it. Yes. Um, it's my favourite actually of all the rest. I mean I've tried so many of them. I have a problem with um, onion, onion allergy. Um, and this place has always managed to make me um, a curry or, or spicy dal uh, curry alternative. They've always managed to make me uh, make me something without onions in there. So I'm very grateful to them. Fantastic curry all together. A favourite grocery store over there too. Taj Stalls, fantastic. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you about. That, that's, that's really upsetting me. Thanks. Yes, you want okay. to play? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Shall I play with him? Oh, you'll get me straight away. You will. No, not straight he away. Looks, At least he one looks minute. so strong. <laughs> Very confident. Sorry. Yes. Last week, one man he took my bishop. You know what's happened to him? Um, yes, yes. Try it. Yeah. All right. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? MashaAllah. Come on, support me. <laughs> Shout for me. <laughs> Come on, ladies, support me. 
Yes. Are you winning? Are you winning? Yes, yes, with your support I'm winning. What's Look. your name? What's the name of the Norman. Norman. No man. No man. No I am man, but my name no man. Oh no man. No man. You said no man. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no man. <laughs> I told you, I told you, told you. I won! I Not won! Yet. Yay! Oh, time, time, time. Oh! I'd completely forgotten I only had one minute, so I ran out of time. So I guess that means he won. Anyway, that was day one of filming in the bag. So one week later. So here we have the Carpenter's Arms. Now, it's a place that's very proud of um, its Cray past. It was, in fact, bought by the Crays for their dear old mum, Violet. Has got a fantastic little beer garden. And I think it's time for a drink. Legend has it that Reggie Cray actually had a drink here to calm his nerves before murdering Jack the Hat McPitty. And supposedly, he grabbed a knife from the kitchen here. The bar supposedly used to be made out of a coffin lid. That is possibly rubbish. But on the hallway, on the right, there is, on the wall, there is some like carpenter stool. Carpenter stool, so that, that belonged to? I think so, I, I'm not sure. sure. And then there's a legend that this was made out of um, uh, yeah, out of a coffin, isn't it? But it's not. Is it? I think it is. This is this is the original lid, the original yeah, bar. It doesn't change. Okay. So most of the of the furniture is like the original. How it was. So this is the original bar top made from the coffin lid, I think. Or supposedly from a coffin lid. Yeah. So as I said, like most of the yeah the part is like original. Yeah. Fantastic. Delivery bike. So here we have the William Davis Primary School, used to be known as the Wood Close School. Uh, Wood Close School, this is Wood Close just over here. And this is where the Cray twins went to school. Um, now it doesn't actually mention that in, on the website for the school. I suppose I'm not really surprised. It's probably not something that they particularly want their pupils to aspire to. In fact, um, if you see just down here, these bricks are slightly more indented. I believe here is a bullet hole um, that was left by Freddie Foreman, aka Brown Bread Fred, um, and Alfie Gerard. Um, and this is where they shot dead Ginger Marks. Now, Freddy Foreman is also, better, also known for one of the people who disposed of Jack the Hat, McVitie's body, after he was killed by Reggie Craig. So another very famous person in the dramatis personae of the Cray underworld. So Reggie had a fight with um, George Tappin, one of the school kids, and um, it was Charlie who said, look, you better, you better learn how to box. So when they were kids, Reggie, Reggie and, Ron, and Ron came here um, and uh, this is where they learned to box. This is in fact the oldest boxing club, boxing school in the UK uh, that's still around today. Uh, Audley Harrison is, one, is among some of the people who have learned their trade here. The only ones I know of the Cray Twins. Sorry? The Cray Twins are the only ones I know of. When yes, I, and, yeah, and Audley yeah. Harrison. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you, you a fan of the Crays or...? <laughs> I think so. They're just the familiar uh, yeah. presence in this area, sort of. Yes. I know the, the mum's house is just up there. That's right. It's not there anymore. Uh, yeah, because I did a little what, stuff like a walking tour, and, and the school they went to, and you know. But you know, there's probably a, a, if you look at it the right way, there's a trail of blood. Yes, <laughs> in I know. The whole area. 
I know. Yeah. It, it, just metaphorically, but you yeah. Know, no, 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 but definitely. It was there. But everywhere you go, you'll find a blue plaque somewhere. But all this, th there's a whole missing history that, I mean, obviously there are quite a few historians that are interested in the craze, but they won't put up any signs to them or anything. No, no, no. no. Not, not, it's not. sort of a bit uh, they don't want to under the radar. No. Well, actually, I mean, he, well, went, he, went, he went to school over here, um, and there's nothing. I mean, by this stage, you've had, what, two or three movies about them? And, yeah. yeah. I think they should be sealed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's always... When when you when they're safely dead, it's the time to mythologise people, isn't it? <laughs> that's true. Yep. And over there, that's um, well, it's around there somewhere. Number one seven eight Valence Road. That's where they lived as kids. House obviously no longer there. As look, it was gone. Okay, so uh, we are going to be looking at Shoreditch in a whole new episode when we get to S. We've got quite a long way to wait, I'm afraid. Um, but so, but just, just because the old station of Shoreditch used to be just off Brick Lane, Shoreditch is obviously this way. Um, uh, this is the box, the bo the, this may not even be here but when, we, when we actually eventually get to S, but that is a sort of like the box park. There's one in, there's one in Croydon. Um, but the reason I wanted to bring you here is here is our wall of love. This is where local people um, leave. We should have bought. We should have bought a lock with us, actually. Maybe we'll come back and do a special. We'll, we'll, we'll leave a lock here. But as you can see, we've got locks here dating back as far back as 2015. Um, it's really quite nice to walk around and have a look at some of these locks. Obviously, this is something that happens all over the place uh, in, in, in France. You've got them on the, um, I think it's the, Le, Le Pont Neuf. Ponte Vecchio, I think, in, in Florence. In Florence, the Ponte Vecchio. Um, here we have an iron railing in Shoreditch. It's not as romantic, admittedly, but the people who left the locks here are certainly just as romantic. Just we don't have any bridges in London where we can do this, so we have to make do with um, with an old iron railing. Oh, I found one. I found one from look from 2004. Look at that, Jacqueline and Eric, forever and always since 12th of November 2004. If you are reading this and you're a subscriber, Jacqueline or Eric, hopefully you are still together. Do drop us a line in the comments below. Love to hear your story. And um, I'm sure you'll be really happy to know that your lock is still here after all those years. Okay, so this is Glater Street. We were here last, last week, actually. Um, this is Bethel Green Road. And the road just up there uh, is uh, Club Row. Now, in the old days, so this, I mean, this market has, has sold everything over the years. In the old days, in the 60s and the 70s, this is where people used to come for pets. So you had cats and dogs, you had birds, you had massive big snakes as well, and even lion cubs. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, uh, you, could, you could buy a lion cub right here on Sclater Street. In fact, I think the lion cubs were normally sold just over there on, on Club Row. Um, RSPCA did get inv involved because it wasn't legal even back then and eventually um, they only sold birds and cats and dogs and snakes and iguanas and then eventually even that too has gone as it should do because it's not really the place a market for these things. We were here a week ago and I tried to buy a stall. He was offering, he, he said it was on, it was normally sold for £25. He was happy to take £20 for it. Now, I have really regretted not buying that stall because I really needed a stall and I have gone on about it quite a lot. Haven't I, Sharon? Yes. All right, let's go. So I'm going to have another go. I'm going to have a go at haggling. Now, we, we spent a couple of months in India in 2017 and I'm going to use, I'm going to hone all my skills, all my haggling skills. <sighs> Unfortunately, I haven't got a 10 on me. I've got a £20 note. So I'm going to have to, oh, you haven't got change, have you? starting well, isn't it? I've got a £20 note, so I'm going to have to ask him for change. I can't say all I have is a tenner. Unless I buy something else and get a change of a tenner. Do you need anything from there? No. 
Uh, let's just try anyway. So I don't this is going to be extra hard because I've got a ten, I've got a 20 pound note. Um, just keep the camera rolling. Oh, I just hope he says yes because I really love it. I'm going to offer him a tenner. If I get it 15, I'll be happy. This is how you do it. I hope it's still there because if it's still there, then he's, much, he's going to be much more likely. I told you. I told you. I told you that was worth worth. No. Get it. We're going to get it for tenner. If we get it for. You're not going to get it at all. You just want to get it there. Come on then. I'm going to get it. Joe? Hi. Hi. Joe? It's gone. No, it's there. Oh, it is. I was going to get. I was going to oh, get. Oh, I don't know get, how we're going to carry. You work here. Did you want that? I wouldn't mind it. Yeah. Okay. He's interested in that. Um, I think it's. How much is this little chair? Are you not food dwarf? I came. I came last week, and you only hadn't sold it last week. Um, oh, hey. Twenty, sir. But is it? Is there a chance of getting it for ten? No. Fifteen, possibly. Fifteen. Um, you do it for fifteen. You think 15 is the cheapest you'll come, is it? Yeah, 14. That'd be brilliant, that way we can both get, uh, get, get some food afterwards. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I did come last week. And I was yeah, just I know you're going to see it. Yeah. Yay, I'm so happy. I'm so, so am I. Look at this, check it out. It's got, this, is, this, this reminds oh, me. Dude, check it for bugs. No, oh, no, no, no. What's that? This this reminds oh, me. Oh no, that came off of you. This reminds me of Trinkadis. Trinkadis, the uh, we the. We have shampoo for that, you know. This reminds me of Trinkadis, which is the uh, style of broken glass and mirrors and, and mosaic that yeah. they use on. Classy. On. Um, really classy. Modernista. Yeah. Um, street furniture and stuff. Help me, please. This can't go on. You you did it. I can't believe you bloody bought it. I remember what a bargain. Six, well, okay, you're carrying. 14 pounds, carrying. that's 14, 14 pounds. pounds. That's less than I was going to pay for 14's it. better than 25. That's what they wanted for it last week. Yeah. And I drew the line and said, it's not going to happen. So, so at can, least now, you, hey, you look, can we can bargains. get it home. We can hit it with some WD-40, kill the, the fleas or whatever's on it, <coughs> and uh, maybe wash your hair at the same time. If you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel. It costs you nothing. Oh, and like this video. Next time on Love Your London, we check out Whitechapel High Street and end up at The Blind Beggar, another pub closely connected to the Cray Twins, which Sharon sketches for our fundraising auction. And how lucky we had our own seating. Till next time. From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond. Love Your London, have a banana.